Okay, for the, those people that haven't done this before, uh, it's much more fun to be live, so we're live. Right now I'm just going to basically clean up a bit and then package up a set of case tools for Ben, I think. And... Be right back. So I actually have, hey Ron, um, make sure that that way. Why is this being weird? Hang on a second, guys. That should be better. Okay. So yeah, so ship to Ben, okay, in uh, Indiana. Hey Tim, so I gotta package up a set of crank tools, but I gotta clean up a little bit first here. So let's do that. So I got the 288 running. Seems to run pretty good. Um, I did not get a bar on it today, but I did get it running. So that's pretty cool. Stefan, how's it going? Do you like the kit? Hopefully Stefan likes the kit. <laughs> Bob, uh, it's Tim, Bob, Bob, we need to flow with the kids. Yeah, well, the, the T-Way Day video is only 30 seconds long. Stefan, do you, do you have to wonder how you did it all those years without it? I don't know how many sides you rebuilt, but can you possibly... Imagine doing it any other way. If you've come from the hot and cold thing, then you really just start to believe that people need to have their head checked. Pizza King, that's me. Well, I only ate half of it. So I see them come together, I was like, <laughs> what have I been doing? Yeah, I know. It, it really is, you know, I, I did a number of saws with the hot and cold. I don't remember how many, but I did quite a few with it. And I started to think there's got to be a better way than this. And then the, the next question was, even though there has to be a better way, we also have to start questioning, why hasn't anybody come up with a better way? You know? And that's always like, that type of thing always astounds me, is why something that's frustrating that could be made easy stays frustrating for so long. You know what I mean? I'm going to 
happened in there? I, I don't know. Uh, my brain some days. Okay. Um. Anyway, so we got to put a kit together. Because Ben bought a kit. So i got to put a kit together for Ben. Burn. I'm burnt down on energy. Watching my video. <laughs> uh, uh, Bob James. It's going like starting with fire. It's usually a lighter. Yep. <laughs> what would be interesting, um, Stefan, is to is to actually compare it to a few other things that are on the market. And I know that there are other ways to do it, but from what I've seen, um, I mean, I'm obviously biased, but. From what I've seen, I, I like my way the best. It's as simple as I could possibly make it, while also making it fairly universal. You know what I mean? So Ben, this is your kit, and all I'm gonna do is deburr it. You may wanna I got No, make it. Actually, I got. Yeah, I knew that was coming. See if I can get a link here. We've got a guy asking about the tools right now, so it's like, oh shoot. Let's see if he responds while he's while we're worrying about that. Let's see if we can get this stuff cleaned up and whatnot. Again, this is Ben's kit. I'm just going to take the burrs off. And there's probably more deburring to do, but so check on that, Ben, before you, uh, before you use the kit. Just so you guys know, I don't know what anybody's saying right now. I'm paying attention to something else over here while I'm getting these deburred.
These should slide through. Like, slide, drop, whatever. Slide through. Easy. They should all go easy through here. If they don't, it'll be burned or something. Somewhere. Aluminum. There we go. Okay. That one. Hmm. Now they all slide through perfectly. Sorry. Whoa. How did how do we get a troll going on here? Done. He's now hidden. Still waiting for this guy Jimmy to uh, Ithaca, New York to respond. Anyway. You guys still there? Yeah, I don't know what uh, what was going on with that. All right, let me bring you back up here and Patrick's here. Patrick Pratt. Fenton and I was sweet corn days. Have a good one. So who did I miss? Who I haven't, who I haven't I given a shout out to here? Let's hear. Anyway, so we've got... Uh, 
been going on here for a tool kit. Hang on. I'm going to package this right up. All right. So we have, uh, he wanted a main kit. So we have a flywheel side rod, M10, M12, M14 rods, small sleeve, large sleeve. And you want to make sure that if you have a small saw, you use a small sleeve. A large saw, you use a large sleeve. Don't use a small sleeve on a large saw. Doesn't work. You'll break something. It's very simple. Two handles. Three eight, it's, it's essentially a 3 8 carriage bolt and 5 16 carriage bolt. Just act as, as a handle. Nuts and washers. There's your kit. Wrong washer. Nuts, nuts and washers, 5 eighths. I need some 3 eighths carriage bolts, which means I'm going to go to tractor supply probably tomorrow. <sighs> Just some packing material here, that's all. Now, I think eating too much corn actually gives you pellagra. Hey, Brandon. But only because you end up vitamin deficient. I think it's niacin, niacin deficiency. Is that the logger? Is that right? I don't remember. Have that. I've got a sticker for Ben. There you go. And I'm going to need this to go in an envelope. What? Pellagra. Um, it was. It, you're jogging my memory from medical school. It was. It's a. It's a vitamin deficiency disease, but they didn't think it. Like 150 years ago, they didn't think it was a vitamin deficiency. They thought it was something infectious, and they couldn't figure out what the heck was going on until they figured out that everybody that had it was eating way too much corn and, like, nothing else. I think that was the story, but I don't remember. So, Ben, here's your ticket, and here's your stuff, and I'm going to slap this on there right now. And the nice thing is I can just put this in the mailbox, and the mailman takes it tomorrow. Don't even need to go down to the post office anymore to do this stuff, which is awesome. Okay, well. All right, Ben, thank you for the purchase. 
Um, the 394, 395 stuff is late. It sucks. The new carburetor for the 370, for the 272, I think is late. In case anybody hasn't seen it. I'm super excited, super psyched that Kenny told me about um, more of these screwdrivers. That's awesome. Because I, you know, I use lots of tools, obviously. Um, and I'll tell you what, when I'm tuning carburetors, my hand always goes back to this screwdriver. And I got it um, at a reuse store, essentially. And... Uh, I, I just love it. You know, I got them for like 50 cents a piece. I got two of them and I lost one and I'm just so afraid I'm going to lose the other. And then somebody on eBay had these uh, vintage, you know. Somebody on eBay had them. Hey, Earl. Haven't seen you in a bit. Um, so they had them and I offered the guy six bucks a shot for them. And uh, he took it. So I bought all six. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, Psyched about those. Don't know what I'm going to do with all six of them, but um, I love them. Vintage Stanley. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so the 288 runs. I mean, you guys can go watch the video. Um, it, it runs. It runs pretty good. Uh... I need a new brake band. The brake band on there from a 394 is just a little bit too big. So it doesn't quite work. Uh, so I bought a 288 brake band that's coming. Best I can tell, I bought 288 brake bands. I bought three of them, and they're actually 268 brake bands, which is not that big of a deal because I can just throw them in my pile for 268 stuff, but um, 272, whatever. Uh, so it's just not, not that big of a deal. That, that kind of got screwed up, but still kind of annoying. So I have a new one on order. Uh, what else? So as I have for sale, I have three 394s, 288, that 262 is going to be for sale. Uh, Mason has it right now. He's putting it through its paces. Who that was? Whatever, doesn't matter. So we have that. Um, if anybody wants an update on the Volvo, I'll tell you something funny. The Volvo is still sitting over there at the shop because the guy that was supposed to work on it is on a medical leave because he cut himself real bad. So he's uh, been out for a bit and hopefully he's coming back, but you know, who knows? So I, there's no particular rush on the Volvo. I'm good without it right now. So as soon as I get an update, I'll let you guys know what uh, was going on. So why is it I don't know who Mason is? Mason, Husky Boy. So Mason, uh, the guy that was here the other night, um, his handle on the forums is Husky Boy. And he will outcut all of us, probably put together. <laughs> What's the next song I'm going to work on? You know, I don't know. Uh... I'm kind of hoping that the, that the 394, 395 lot show 395 parts, they can let me know. But I'm definitely looking forward to working on those. I'm not planning, as of right now, of building anymore. Because I don't need any more. I've got way too many right now. I've got to start selling these things. So if you guys are interested, let me know. Uh, I've got a 42 sitting here for parts that I'm going to take apart. Um, Patrick possibly is going to send me a 266. 
as a thank you for doing his 372. So I'll have a 266 to work on, maybe. Um, he's he's a firefighter out in California, so he, he's been busy. Why well, don't try to set electric head trimmers with them plugged in? Wow, yeah. Hey, Edwin, you made it. Great. Where's Larry? And where's David? <laughs> Bob, as soon as I raise the money, purchase the saw, I'm just waiting for some work. I've been slow and big slabs. I'm, I'm slow in getting saws sold, you know? can't sell slabs, I can't sell slabs. What are you going to do? Tell you what, um, what's your thought on the, the Wiseco piston? Um, I guess I don't have a thought because I haven't tried one. But then again, I'm not looking for that extra 2% of performance, you know. Or 1% or half a percent or whatever it might offer over... A, uh, an OEM piston or even a Meteor. Maybe they're fine pistons. I don't know if they're worth the money. At least for, not for what I do, certainly. What am I doing? You know, I'm hanging out cutting leisurely, you know, I'm not doing production cutting, I'm not doing falling, I'm not doing racing. I race once in a while, but I'm not really racing, you know, I'm not serious racing, if you know what I mean. Racing Ken doesn't count, you know. <laughs> the the Wiseco ones with the coating, uh, they, some others have coatings. Uh, the Wiseco ones, um, I think Definitive Dave is selling like Wiseco performance performance pistons for certain saws, but I think they're like 150 bucks a shot. You can get a Meteor piston for like 40 bucks. And for what I do, the Meteors work fine. the floor right now. The cut with one millimeter air with the bone took years to the feeling to go back to the tip. Cold weather coming. No solids it will be needed, yeah. I hear the X torque carb is bigger than standard Yes, the X torque carb is bigger than a standard three seventy two. The R the RWJ carburetor is bigger than a state like an H D twelve B. Yes. I've never had a, a, a X Torque carb run great. I don't know. It's not like those RWJ carburetors just seem to be uh, finicky. I don't know. Not consistent. Touchy, yeah. I don't, I don't know why, but the RWG and and you can like never get them kitted properly or whatever. Matt, have you ever bored ahead for a bigger piston? No. Again, Ron, I'm I'm just not there. You know, Ron, if you if you notice what I've been doing is just tearing down and rebuilding trash saws. I'm lucky to get them running again. You know. Let alone go for the perform again, go for the performance end of things necessarily. I'll like I had Rattler do the uh, two eight eight head, and I think he did a great job. Uh, I was just trying to save myself some time and some grinding and whatnot, but I'm not going to fiddle around with it and like go back in and do some more grinding and see if I can get a little bit more. There's not a whole lot of point, you know. 
it's going to be good enough for what I do, certainly. So, um, I have a 372 head that would probably be a candidate for doing such a thing. We can't wait for you to start cutting either, James. James, you have to get the the family there to go grab that saw and that three fifty and just stick it in your lap like a kitten. Just make sure to take the chain off first, will you? There's Larry. Yeah, U.S. Chrome is the place. Yeah, I, I know, Tim. I know, for sure. Um, I'll tell you what, one of the most impressive saws I ever ran was the big board uh, Dolmar 166 that Lee has. That thing was crazy. Just got woke up by my cousin. Okay. Where is he as Chrome? I don't know. A 120 and a 114 SD. So that, yeah, the, I'm not familiar with the Dolmars. Um, all I know is running Lees were just in, in insanity. The biggest saw that I prefer to run is this one. Husky 268. Evening. How are you? You shan't in the car. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for what? You're welcome. But I don't know what I'm uh, being thanked for. Look, you got a nice new decomp here. See? See, Larry? Works fine. Look at that. Nice, fresh, new on off switch here. You got a choke. Everything works very nice. Feels nice. <laughs> Hang on. Get that fresh and new. Nice and tight on there, nothing moving. I have to make Larry drool a little bit. There's got to be some incentive, you know. I don't see why I want to do it much sooner when the next size up saw is already there. Because if you can have more displacement in a smaller package, 
then you can get the job done faster and with less fatigue at the end of the day. The only thing missing is a WJ-39? Really? Where in the world would one get one of those? Who knows? Very, very hard to find, even on eBay. I got lucky the other day at 50 bucks, because mostly because it was not listed as a WJ39. If I was going to list those on eBay, I'd list them at 100 bucks. But I'm not listing them. No, 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 no. The WJ-39 is the um, more desirable of the three carburetors. They have uh, the WJ-39, the WJ-70, and the WJ-71. I forget which one I have on here, to be honest. I think it's a brand new WJ-71. Yeah, that is a brandy new carburetor on there. How, how's the intake? Well, let, let's put it like this. Um, the design is good. I need to tweak it. But I... Um, Eric did a nice job, and I'm just not going to ask him for more. Uh, back and forth. It, just, it would be too much. So... What I did was I bought the design from him. I have it. I still need to tweak it. I need to basically learn 3D modeling, which I, I've done some of, so I can tweak the design and then have somebody actually 3D print it. Well, there's, there's no way I'm going to get rid of my WJ-39s for less than $100 a shot. It's not happening. Supposedly, of the carburetors, that's the more desirable one. Now, I can't honestly tell a difference. I mean, the WJ-71 seems to run just fine, but I, I don't know. At least according to lore, the 39s are the better ones. And they were on the earlier models of 394s, basically. Is so a 105 the same? No. Will not fit. 390, um, actually, 
What does fit? Uh, what, what does 105 fit? I don't know. The only ones that fit. 39, 70, and 71 for a 394. 395 is different. 660 is different. Dealer tried buying yours. <laughs> Larry, do you want me to ship this without a carburetor? Because I can do that. So yeah, now there's 15 people here. If anybody wants a 394, I have three of them, including Larry's. So if they're on a saw, how can you ID it? You can't. You gotta pull it off. You pull it off. What's your choice for Natchez? But I buy them in packs of 10 off of eBay. So yeah, Bob, the only way to ID a WJ39, it, I think they're on the earlier models of 394. Um... You really have to pull it off and look at the side of it to ID it. And Tim, I don't have the cross reference. Actually, I think e-replacement parts is a pretty good cross-reference to actually tell you, if you look up a part, they'll tell you what other models it's on, which is pretty cool. Does anybody have anything else? I'm just hanging out here. I'm, I'm feeling like going back to bed. <laughs> going up bed early, whatever. If anybody wants saws or tools, they can always email me. My email in here. Get rid of the extra ampersands, obviously. What's your thought on how the 288? I think the 288 is going to run great. I think the 288 is going to run just fine. Uh, it certainly sounds good. Um, but I, I, I just didn't stick a bar on it. I, I got to get that silly chain break finalized, and then I can stick a bar on the thing. Uh, the kit that I put together tonight is 170 shipped. 
No, this is a 394 man mat. Uh, I accept payment, uh, PayPal, friends and family, or you can do a postal money, money order. Those are basically the two methods of payment. The top covers aren't too bad. Um, I think you can get one of these brand new top covers on uh, eBay for like 68 bucks shipped. And no, I'm not going to Buckenstock. thing is like when you start adding up all the stuff like a, an OEM clutch cover is 80 bucks by itself this new tank is like 150 so yeah the top cover is it is six is 68 it's not that bad a genuine high top cover for a 372. I have a high top top cover for a 372, but getting it to you, Mega, Mega would be cost prohibitive. Um, and it's ugly. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, 268. The um, it depends on what size you're you want to do as to what kit you need. Usually I sell what what's called a, what I call a main kit. It's not a complete kit. It's a main kit. It'll do like ninety percent of the size that you need. And um, it's it's one seventy shipped. So it does you know everything from a four forty, from an 026 to a six sixty, all the way from. Uh, Husky 268 to a 3120 to a 346 to a 372, 390, all that stuff. It do just about everything. There's a few weird ones that it doesn't do, but. Yeah, you know, that, that's the thing is that the 372 top covers are not that bad. If, if you're talking about just the high top, just this. It's like $23 or something like that. Yeah, it, it, they're not that bad. But I, I hate shipping single things. I just can't stand. I just can't stand like doing doing single item shipping. You know, it's just awful. It just never cost effective. Matt, you said something about 246 lower end. Same as 242 and 42, I think. Probably a 238 as well, but I, I'm not from I'm not completely familiar with all that. Which one does the basic kit not do? It doesn't do a 576, because that's weird. It doesn't do a 242. It doesn't do an 880 in that family because it needs an extra sleeve. It doesn't do the old Husky 266. More or less, they do the, the kit does just about anything else between steel and Husky. I'm not completely sure for Dolmar, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of the Dolmars are covered as well because a lot of the crank uh, threads are similar between the models. And then there's also, um, 
if you wanted a partial kit, you know, you don't need certain rods, then we can eliminate some stuff. But uh, it's usually easiest uh, for people to have a main kit, and then they can put together essentially 90% of the relevant saws. I mean, just about a a anything you want to put together, it'll put together. And, you know, heaven forbid you can't get something together or whatever, then you just let me know and I can, if I can't make it, I can custom make it. Just not that big a deal. So, yeah, Tim, so if you if you buy everything that I offer, so 170 for a main kit, 242 rod, 266 and 661 rod, 880 sleeve, That's 260 shipped. The only thing I don't have in stock right now is the 576 stuff. What is PayPal friends and family? So you can do PayPal. The issue with PayPal is if you do PayPal for goods and services, then PayPal takes a significant cut. But they offer buyer protection. If you send it via friends and family, then PayPal doesn't take a cut, but then there's no buyer protection. So I've had people send, send via goods and services, but then they send me a few extra bucks basically to cover whatever PayPal took. It's going to cost you more money to do that. Matt, you need to attach a set to a board and label the saws it works on. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know. It, it would it would be nice to have, like, a legend or whatever, but you, once you do it once, you really almost don't need it. And also, the form letter that I have that I emailed to you basically kind of goes over a lot of it anyway, so... So yeah, the, the downside to friends and family is certainly that there's there's essentially no buyer protection. Once you've sent it to me, you've sent it to me. Now, the difference is that if you send me money, I'm going to put your kit together right here on YouTube. So <laughs> you can see it backed. <laughs> I do PayPal all the time. YouTube might not let you post a link here. You're welcome to do it, of course, Larry, but um, I don't know if it'll... Why don't I sell them on eBay? Because I don't want to sell them on eBay. I want to sell them to my subscribers. I want to sell them to people that I interact with just like this. And usually because I can't keep them in stock. I literally have... I have one left, one kit left right this very second. I'll have to machine some more sleeves this week, which I don't even have the time for, but I'll, I'll have to figure something out with that. I've got to go do the machining. Plus, if I sell them on eBay, then eBay is going to take a significant cut. This way, eBay takes no cut. Um, and, you know... It, it's eBay would possibly be a, a sales pace that I wouldn't be able to keep up with. <laughs> you know, it, it may maybe if it if it did come to that, I could quit my job. You know, but <laughs> but I I really think that the tools are for enthusiasts. Um, there's just not that many people that would need a main kit on the planet. I figure a total of about a thousand people worldwide maybe 2,000 total worldwide would actually need such a kit.
Well, I'm not sure we really know what we're doing, Bob. But we got to try. That's the thing. We got to try. And we're trying, you know? David made it. The DIY kit thing. Yeah, it's it's big. So when am I going to have more? I don't know. I I have um my intention is to fill all orders. So if you if you order, then your order will get filled. Right now I have plenty of rods, which is usually the hold up. It's just a matter of me going down to my folks and getting on the lathe and machining a few extra sleeves. That's really what I'm... Really what gonna is the hold up right the second. So I my intention is to fulfill kits indefinitely. As long as people are interested, I will try to keep fulfilling them. And just to show you that I... Put my money where oh God, put my money where my mouth is. So these are just flywheel side rods. So Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not running low on those. I'm running a tad low on M12 rods and maybe M14. But not too bad. I probably have 15 or 20 of those, each of those left. So keeping up with all this stuff is is really not easy, and it's it was a really really hard start because doing all of this machining is is just if you're doing it by hand, it's really hard. It's one thing to machine solid rod, but if you're doing thread milling, which is what this is, this is thread milled. And then they have to drill it that way. And it's it's not easy to do. So even though you quit, Dad, he lets you still come over. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, don't worry, there's no forgetting. And, and, and also, if you want to get a little philosophical for a minute, because I think that would be important. The topic of forgiveness is an interesting one. And I've been watching a long time. Uh, hey, Dan's here. Okay, good. And Dad, yes, Dad does need me to fix his chainsaw. Um, I'll come back to the topic of forgiveness because it's very interesting. Um, roughly, actually, I, I know almost exactly. I was just doing the math today. It's like 228, 229 kits, somewhere around there. Uh, not full kits. Some of them were were really complete kits. Some of them were single, single saw kits. Like the, I have a 660 kit that's good for a single, just the 660. And the job's going, you know. Um, I'm feeling much more like it's, you know, it's the place that I go every day. Uh, you never know if something's going to be long term. 
right now the, uh, the, the my wife is in Oklahoma with the kids on vacation, and uh, Oklahoma is still a I'll call it a significant pull for her because she's there with the in-laws. So there's that. So we don't know what the future holds. Um, but back to the, to the topic of forgiveness, um, I, I find it very interesting. There's a lot of, a lot of people that uh, forgive others when nobody's asked for forgiveness. And that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, we can be philosophical for two seconds. Uh, why are we as humans expected to forgive others when they haven't asked for, for forgiveness when it's something God himself doesn't do? So... This is, this is for, for the, the people out there that... Uh, our faith-based individuals. Um, God makes forgiveness available to everyone that asks for it. But that doesn't mean that we get it without asking for it. So yet, a lot of people think that forgiveness is something that's just given. And I don't think so. I don't think so. I think forgiveness is 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 part of reconciliation and you have to have two people to tango for that. You can't just be one-sided. It's one thing to, you know, it's one thing to, you know, at least attempt to forget or move on or whatever or you know, not hold a grudge. All that stuff is I think very important uh, ultimately, but for true reconciliation, for true forgiveness, you need to have two people involved. And It's it's definitely a rabbit hole. There's there's no question about it, but um, but Bob, there's you know there's actually five aspects to an apology. I was just discussing this in the dental office the other day because it was kind of pissing me off. Was talking listening to the news and they were talking about apologizing and what really is an apology? An apology is starts with I'm sorry. Um, the next aspect of is I shouldn't have done that. The next aspect is saying, expressing that it won't happen again. Number four is, will you forgive me? And then the five, the fifth point, I, I personally think that this is important. And it's something very few people talk about and very few people do. And it's called, what can I do to make it right? Time for ice cream. Good. So, how many people in your life actually say, what can I do to make this right? There's been a wrong here. How can I fix it? What can I do to make this right? And I think we need more people in our lives that are like that. I don't know how to get those people. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the expert on that. But... When something's been wronged, uh, you know, it, it, overall, um, my experience is that if, if, if I felt wronged, uh, other people aren't really sorry. And it's just, it's a hard thing to deal with, you know. Uh, it's fine for me to just say, okay, I'm going to move on, but that's not forgiving, you know. And even if I say I forgave that person it's not true forgiveness because the other person didn't ask for it. So, you're not banned yet. Not yet, Chris. 
We meet up on the river today. He was nice as well, but he's the air clear. So clear the air, you know. If you got to do it, you got to do it. You, you know, you know, Bob. The it's a good point, and and the point there, the the key word that you put there is effort. And you know what? You know what's funny. I I think a lot of people would put the effort in, but everybody's so doggone tired. Me personally, I just want to go lay down. You know, I don't I don't want to do anything. If you know, and and if if really truly making a relationship better. Um, takes takes effort you need energy to do that and if people in your life don't have any energy because they're being worked to the bone they didn't gonna happen so I'm I'm definitely not the world's relationship expert. Um, I'm not a theological expert either. But I've certainly pieced that sort of stuff together from my personal life. And I'm taking it back to Dad in the office and, and all that stuff. Um, I'm disappointed that I had to leave the office, but I'm not sorry that I did it. So I'm not looking for dad, my father's forgiveness on that. Um, necessarily, it's... I'm looking for his understanding, and he's been understanding. So, and, and the thing is that uh, if nothing's going to change, nothing's going to change. And, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, there were so many different things that just were not going to change. And it made me leave. It made it so I had to leave. I didn't really have much of a choice. There was going to be no change. So I had, I had to leave. And... I don't think there has been change. So, you know what? Um, that's fine. I'm doing my own thing now, you know? Um, more or less, I mean, I talked I talk to my mother today. Uh, we talked for a little bit. It's fine. Uh, I talked to Dad today a little bit and yesterday. That was fine. But I'm off doing my own thing now. So, and who knows whether I'm going to be here much, much longer or whether I'm going to end up in Oklahoma or what. I don't know. Don't feel like you should not be the first. No, it... Tim, there's nothing wrong with going up to somebody and say, I, I think there's a wrong that's been, been done here, you know? Dads are working good about working the dog mess. I, I know for working for mine, leaving was the best thing I ever done. It wasn't, my dad was not working me to the bone. That was really not the issue. Um... If my dad and I work on a project together, we're totally fine. Whether we're working out in the barn or in the dental office, if we're working together, we're working together, and that's fine. Um, that was definitely not the issue. Um, there were multiple uh, other reasons why, and don't really feel like getting into that tonight, uh, mostly because I've already talked about it in other videos, but... Um, it was not my father working me to the bone. That said, uh, it was almost that I didn't have enough work and that my work was not efficient enough. There was there was, that was part of it. If that makes any sense.
James, there's no question that you have a wonderful family. I, I will, will not question that. But what I will say regarding that is that friends are the family we choose. And in a lot of ways, I think that's more special than family because family is family. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly think that uh, overall, the most trustworthy people in our lives tend to be family rather than friends, but friends are the family we get to choose. And the most special of that, of course, is a spouse. Literally family we, you know, literally family we choose, which I think is really nifty um, in so many different ways. But, um, yeah, to me... I have hugely valued having friends. Sorry, Mega, you are funny. I couldn't help it. <laughs> now look at Chance, I grew a volume. He grew a vacuum cleaner guru for getting something. No, I, I'm i just a DIYer, man. I'm just a guy that follows his nose. And, and I think, I tend to think chainsaws are more habit than anything. Well, I, I, I hear you, and I can't imagine. Can't imagine. I, I guess, or, or I had a bit of a different, I, I, I have a much different situation. Literally since eighth grade, I've had one goal, and that is to help dad. The one goal in my life was help dad and figuring out how to do that. And to leave was a huge change in my life. I wish my grandfather was still around. I really wish my grandfather was still around. Dad's dad. Um, I really wish he was here to talk to. Mostly because if you asked him what three thirty seconds of an inch was, he'd be able to tell you to the decimal. Four places. He was an incredible guy like that. I wish I could have a piece of something around here that was grandpa's. I know I've got something of grandpa's around here, something he machined or whatever, which is just, some of his stuff is just nuts. You gotta do what you gotta do. I know. So yeah, and Bob, yeah, it was overwhelming. Didn't know what to do. I think I stayed in bed for a week. So, anyway, um, it's late. I got to get up tomorrow, go to work. I got to go put the cat outside because I don't want him waking me up. So, anything else, guys? Um, 
Good talk. Yes, yes. Do appreciate all you. I really do, and I I, I want to hang out. I do. Um, I gotta figure out some stuff to work on. That's all. <laughs> I work with him in his and now my shop every day. So you never know what the outcome would have been. I know, Earl. I hear you. So, I hope everybody has a great night. And, uh, yes, I know you have a 288 blue top, Chris. No, the cat is not staying in. The cat is going out. Very important. Um, I have a blue top, a blue top as well now, you know. Mine can handle a bigger bar than yours. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Night, everybody. Have a great night. Be safe, everybody. Here's my email if anybody needs to contact me. Husky268, if you want tools, let me know. And I can email me, and I will send you the form letter, okay? Four 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 kit saw in a box will buy yours. Just the top cover or the whole 288? Never mind. We'll talk later, Chris. Everybody have a great night. Uh, email me if you need anything. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.